Hey team, the one, two. Let's have a look at whether we can level this up, make this better, whether you're a southpaw, whether you're an orthodox. Let's dig into it, let's go. Hey team, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the sweet science. The one, two, the jab cross, a staple key skill of any boxer's arsenal. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at this, how we can take it from beginner, all the way through to making that more advanced. So, stage one, jab cross. If you're an absolute beginner, this is where you should be starting. If you're a bit more advanced, we'll get round to you. So from a right hand point of view, I've done previous videos on this and I'll leave a link in the description as well. Okay, it is just feet in a good toe heel line, feet 45 degrees, hands up, chin down, elbows tight. I'll just go slightly off angle from there and every beginner makes this kind of thing. They push the bum back as I see it all of the time, okay? You ought to be thinking of rotational power. Okay, if I do it facing the camera, see how my lead shoulder is coming forwards, and when I throw my rear hand, it's like my elbow is connected to my knee. Don't make this mistake. Okay, I wanna be bringing that knee with my elbow to help my hips engage, my heel lifts off the floor. And get a little bit of power behind that. Let's have a quick look at that on a bag, then we'll take it to the next level. So, just on the punch bag then, because we're not doing anything else, just make sure you're at a good range, fully turned, so you're making contact with the bag. Don't make this habit here, we just spoke about it. Honest, honestly, I see it all of the time. Bum goes backwards, head goes forwards from here. No. Elbows connected to the knee. As that comes forward, so does the knee from here. So we can get a good solid. I'm not moving my feet. I'm just concentrating on upper body rotation. So I'm not just arm punching like so. South pause is obviously exactly the same thing from here. Just working that. And avoid the common mistakes. Pulling the hand away, dropping the hand afterwards, dropping the hand afterwards and avoid all them mistakes. If you are an absolute beginner, work on that to begin with. Just be in range. Make sure that knee is coming with you on your backhand. But let's level it up again. So stage two, changing range. Again, this channel is for beginners, so if you are slightly more advanced than that and you, this is a bit too far back in your journey for you, skip forward a little tiny bit and you'll get onto the more advanced stuff. But, beginners, it's exactly the same principle. Rotational power up top, bring the knee with you on the elbow, but we're gonna step, step, okay? I've said this a hundred times on this channel, it is a movement step and a recovery step, okay? It's not one tip gets left behind, so it's just from here. And we're closing distance, and it's not big steps. You see that a lot as well in beginner, <coughs> excuse me, in beginner students. Big steps, no, tiny, tiny little steps. We're just gonna move forwards from here. Step. Step, however far your front foot went, your back foot goes the same. South pause, same thing. Step, step, elbow is connected to the knee. Drive it through from there. Don't forget there's actually three rotations in a jab cross. A lot of people forget that. They go one, two. Leave the hand out. There's three rotations. I don't know why I just held up two fingers. There's three rotations. One, two, three. Make sure you're putting that third rotation on the end. We'll just quickly put that on a punch bag, then we'll get into the more advanced stuff. So we need to be taking our shape and form with us. And what we don't want to be doing as beginners is out here. That's way too far. That's a really long step to get your jab in, your, your foundation's broken. So check your range. Take a step and a step back. Now we should have a good distance to go step, step into the bag. So we've got one step, 
two step from there. Do everything we just spoke about. So we're going to step forwards on the jab and rotate. I'm landing on my toes, not my heels. It's definitely not that. Okay. A lot of people make that mistake. Come forward onto your toes, elbow connected to the knee, and bring the back foot in as well. So we're here. Third rotation, hand back to your chin. Yeah. See that happen a lot. People try and push through the bag and they go, leave the hand out there. Too long. Third rotation. Back nice and tight. And again, south force. Again, we don't want to be out here. That even looks silly, doesn't it? Okay, it's just here. Third rotation. Land on your toe, don't make that mistake of going on your heel. It's very, very common because you're thinking about the punch. Think about everything you're doing. Onto your toes, onto your toes. Third rotation. Right, let's start getting a little bit more intermediate. So, once you can consistently do step, step, jab, cross without making too many mistakes, we can start taking this to the next level, which would be an up and over jab cross or a lane change jab cross, what I like to call it. So my opponent is in straight in line with me in my lane two, and I'm going to transfer as a right hand, I'm going to transfer to my lane one. So the foot, instead of just going up, it goes slightly over, if you can see that. So it's not just going there, and it's not going there, it's going up that diagonal line with the front foot. And if you notice, here I am in lane two, up and over, I brought myself into lane one. South pause, brilliant. If you're fighting an orthodox person on that jab, guess where the front foot goes? It goes to that outside of their lead foot, which is where we wanna be. And that cross goes straight down lane two, putting us right on that nice little side where we'd like to be, just to the right hand, our, our right hand side of the orthodox, their left hand side puts them a little bit in that funny position where they're like, oh, where, where's he going? Okay, so, up and over. <laughs> Don't make this mistake. Way too big, okay? It's just up that diagonal line. Again, there's a video about footwork where we speak about Forwards, backwards, left, right, up the diagonal line. That's where we're going. Up the diagonal line. Just putting our jab cross on the, on the end. Don't forget, there is that third rotation still. It's still not... <clears throat> that's not the end of your combination. <clears throat> Always comes back. Third rotation. Let's get it on the bag. Let's have a look. So I thought I'd shoot this one from behind when I'm on the bag so you can see just one that I do go to my left as a right hander and actually how little I'm moving. I mean, from this point of view, you can see it as well. Jab, cross, I've gone slightly to my left, your right. And it'll be exactly the same on the bag. However, I will have my back turned to you and I appreciate that's very rude, I do apologize. And it's weird talking to you through the back of my head, but, it looks like this. So I am in lane two, my up and over jab. You can see I am now in my lane one from a south paw point of view. Brilliant, that's my thumbs up by the way. Brilliant, I go up and over on my jab cross. You can see where we can get to from here. Okay, work your up and over jab cross guys. It is a brilliant thing to get on, but we can take it to another level yet, so let's have a look. So, a slip cross, or splitting the cross, some people like to call it. You can do this with a step step, you can do it with an up and over, I'll do it stationary for now. There's a little detail I want you to think about as well. So, my jab goes the same. Remember, don't flare the elbow. Jab goes the same. As I throw my cross, my head goes off and I slip at the same time. So my thumb is down. So we're like, what you're trying to get is their cross to come shooting past you and your cross goes straight down the middle. Slip jab cross <coughs> from here. However, there's a key detail you might want to think about it's to do with your hands. This is entirely optional. 
you might like it, you might not. Okay, so on the jab, rear hand comes in front of the chin. So you can just bring it back to your chin here. You might want to think about just that lead hand coming to the front as well. Okay, if their rear hand is coming out, there's not too much danger of that hook coming unless they've spotted you doing it over and over again and they see you doing it and they bring that round, fair enough. But you might want to just get used to hand in front, hand in front on that slip jab, uh, slip cross, sorry. Let me know in the comments how you get on with that or whether you think that's viable. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, I don't do it all the time. I don't spar anymore anyway because of my neck injuries. But if I was, if I was working that slip jab cross, I would probably just put my hand close to my shoulder as well, just in case I didn't get across enough so I can catch that on my glove as my hand goes through. Again, you can work it with your step step going forwards. You can work it up and over from here. However, it's just a good little variation of the jab cross and one I think you should be practicing. Let's have a look on the back. What I didn't say when we're just looking at it shadow boxing, it's not an overhand. Okay, I'm not going jab and overhand. That's a different punch. I'm still sending this like I'm throwing a jab cross. However, I'm slipping my head off to the side. So it's not an overhand, <coughs> excuse me, it's not an overhand right or overhand left. That's a different punch entirely. So again, I'm going to do this from in range. So we get a nice little jab. Just remember you play around with that lead hand coming to your chin or the side of the face is entirely up to you, but we get some nice little jab cross. South pause, this works brilliantly as well. Okay, so essentially you're splitting their jab if you're a south pull. Okay, I'm here. And again, we can start working around to our favoured side as south pulls. Okay. Head off to the side. South pull. Head off to the side from there. That was a terrible demonstration. What didn't I do? I didn't rotate back on the last one. I'd done what we've just been speaking about. Left the hand there. Mm. I apologise. Rotation back again. So let's look at the next. So closed side lateral. It's very similar to the up and over. However, I'm in range. So if I was to go up, I'd be going from long range to mid range. So we don't want to do that. Closed side lateral it is just your lateral steps. South four, lateral steps, okay? And it's just simply here and here. Watch for the common mistakes on this one, which would be, uh, see this all the time, little step, big step, I've completely lost my foundation now. Okay, that's very, very common. Uh, it's obviously two steps, you need that recovery step as well. Pop, pop, south pause. So when you'd be thinking about using this, when you are in range, okay, maybe they've got their playing a high guard type thing from here and I'm hitting their gloves maybe just to, that's bad, I went up and over, just to get to the side, change lanes to work a different angle from there. Still an important skill to have to be able to laterally step on your jab cross. Remember, don't go on your heel, it's not that, okay, <coughs> excuse me. Good little shadow boxing drill just to be to continually lateral step. And make sure you're bringing your foundation with you as well. Let's have a little look on the punch bag. So remember you're in range for this one. You might have stepped in. Now I'm going to lateral step from here. I did not go up and over. If I've stepped into range and I now go up and over, you're going to get this happen. Short crosses aren't necessarily bad. I think I've spoke about this before. If I'm too close and I throw a cross normally, okay, your elbow is going to get left behind here. You don't get too much power on it. If you're too close, lift the elbow first. You still get a solid punch because you've got your frame behind. You don't want to be frame underneath the punch. 
So I'm not saying you can't throw a short straight backhand, elbow needs to be behind the shot, but we're in range. I'm just gonna lateral step on both of those. From here, again, third rotation. So good little drill, just to get in your head, just being able to move that one, two around the place. However, let's look at how to do that on the open side. So open side, this direction. Two schools of thought on this. Um, I know which one I prefer, but that's entirely up to you. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other. You should only do this play around with it and see which is more comfortable. I know which one will be more comfortable and I know which one will be more powerful. So traditionally, so we're gonna take our lateral step to our right if we're a right-hander. Step, step, bring your foundation with you. Traditionally, you'll get taught right foot, left hand, left foot recovery step, right hand. Okay, so it's from here. <coughs> Nothing wrong with that. If you really like that, then practice that. That's not a problem whatsoever. Anyone tells you you can't do that, they're not lying in any way, shape or form. I personally think there's a better way to do it, but it's entirely up to you. So, first one, lateral step to the right, right foot goes, left hand goes, left foot goes, right hand goes. South pause, going to our left, Left foot goes right hand, right foot goes left hand. And that's us going to our open side. My personal preferred way is to step. Now my left hand goes with my left foot and my right foot turns over from there. So I get step, step, turn. You could almost say it's three steps. One, two, three, but I don't really kick that hip out because that would be a little bit awkward. So what you actually get is step, jab, cross, moving lateral to the open side. Step, jab, cross. That's my preferred version myself. There's no reason why we can't go step, step, though. Uh, for me, it feels a little bit crossed up. That could be my spine injury, though. Same here, we get step, jab, cross, southpaw, or jab, cross from there. Both work equally well, personally, with the step, I think you get more power, same hand, same foot strike. But let's have a little look on the back. So, open side on the back again. This is an in-range attack again, so maybe I've got their hands up and I'm gonna go to my open side. First version is same, uh, opposite hand, opposite foot. Try it. If it works for you, it works for you. My personal preferred version, got their hands up. Then a little ghost step first. Step, jab, cross. Okay, I'm only changing lanes, I'm not doing a massive uh, step. There's no target. You can see that if I do it here. I've completely changed opponents. It's a little step, just from here, hands are up. Okay, same south four. I'm here, hands up, step, step, cross. Just change lanes ever so slightly on that. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. So going backwards, we can still throw a jab cross. And the, for me, the principles are the same as going to my open side, whether you're south or orthodox, the open side. You can do it one of two ways. Back foot on the jab, front foot on the cross. Nothing wrong with that. And I'd probably suggest that you actually do that first. Okay, just to kind of feel what it's like to punch going backwards. Jab, cross. Nothing wrong with that at all. My personal, my personal, my personal favorite is to do the ghost step again. Step, now as the front foot comes in, jab, cross. You can make that a continual movement. Um, personally, I feel awkward if I was going opposite hand, opposite foot, continually backwards. I've not even done it for years. I don't know if I can even do it, to be honest with you. It doesn't feel natural, to me, personally. However, 
If I just go step, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross. That feels natural to have the same hand, the same foot strike, but it may not feel natural to you to so definitely practice both. Right foot, left hand, left foot, right hand, right foot, left hand, left foot, right hand, right foot. South pause, exactly the same detail. We can go right foot, right, uh, sorry, left foot, right hand, right foot, left hand. Not my favorite or step, jab, cross from there. So that is, <coughs> excuse me, left foot, right foot, right hand, left foot, left hand. And again, that feels more natural for me to do in a continual flow backwards before you might change angles from there. Step, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab. So, let's have a little look on the bag. A great way to practice this is going from mid range back to long range. Excuse me. So I've been on the inside in the mid range from here. Personally, I would take a step first, coming back to long range and fight my way out. You know, nothing worse than being here and just stepping backwards. Particularly, that's a bad habit to have on bags as well. Being in on the mid range, doing whatever you're doing and just stepping back out to long range. You probably just got clocked in, in, in an actual um, fight. Excuse me. Um, so, again, we can go right foot, left hand. It doesn't feel so natural to me personally, but it may do to you. So, we're in here. Getting back to my long range. South pause is exactly the same. Fighting on the inside. Personally, on that one, I know you can't see my feet so well in this section, but I stepped first, fighting in the mid range. Step, jab, cross, from there. Another one I think you should practice, guys, just to level up your one-twos. Lastly, really helping you deliver speed times mass, which equals power, so we can get a really good, powerful backhand, is this both foot movement. So if you're familiar with the more pendulum style footwork, the more amateur style footwork, being more here, so, Push, when I go forwards, push from the back foot, but both feet come with me. I literally done a video about footwork uh, a couple of weeks ago where we started bouncing side to side, walk this into our box and start this. That little rhythm there, so I'm not step stepping with this jab cross. I'm actually pushing from the back foot on the jab, boom, both feet land and then turn that cross over from there. So we get this. Okay, it's different to the step step. Step step. Got your little rhythm. I appreciate I, I can't do it slowly when I'm in the air. I ain't that good. So from here, push on the jab. Both feet have landed. My rear heel is raised definitely and that turns over because the elbow's connected to the knee from there. So you're actually getting all of your body weight come forwards into more of a collision punch. Third rotation, get your hand back to the chin, south pause, exactly the same thing. Get your little motion going from here, push from the back foot, and turn it over. There's a bit of difference, there's not a huge amount, but a difference in the power you'll get on the bag, so let's have a final look at that. So, here we are, I'm out of range, definitely out of range. I've got my little rhythm going from here. I'm going to drive from the back foot to land the jab and back out again. There's definitely a difference in power on that shot, okay? Push, there's my jab, turn it over on the cross. Powerful, powerful shot. Don't be too far away, you don't want to be out here and like, doing some kind of, yeah, you're too far. Edge of range. Drive from the back foot from here. Turn everything over how we have done. We've landed, elbows connect to the knee, knee comes with it, and final rotation from there. South four point view from here. Nice, solid punch. So definitely one you should be practicing. If you're not, make sure you are. 
So there we have it team, eight ways to work your jab cross. It is such a versatile key skill. We can move it forwards, we can move it sideways, laterally, both ways, closed side and open. We can work it backwards. It's a brilliant, brilliant combination. Something to this day, what, 40 odd years later, I still practice. Uh, love a jab cross, love a one two. Make sure you're making it as good as you can do. Go through all the drills. If you're a complete beginner, start with where we started, just making sure you've got your body mechanics and put that step, step in it from there. Once you can step, step, you can do an up and over. Once you can do a lateral step, you can move it to your left if you're a right hander. Once you can do the open side, you move it to your right. Once you can work backwards, means you no longer have to, just put your hands up and work backwards to cut an angle. You can fight your way on the retreat as well. So let me know how you get on guys, train hard, train safe, and I'll see you next time.